Like, I'm sorry, I'm just in love with the fabric of this dress. So cute. This has to be the last book haul for quite a few months because goodness gracious. Um, in my defense, War Stones has been a little bit too tempting this year for some reason. There's there's been too many, too many. Um, I'm pretty certain you understand what I mean. Can you blame me? And I know I mentioned War Stones, and the first box on top is Barnes and Noble. In my defense, though, there are discounts. There are very tempting books. And, um, yeah, that's, that's about it that I have in my defense. Also, these boxes have been sitting around for a little while for me to film. I was gonna be, like, really cool with this. I was gonna film this at midnight in the sun. We haven't had sun. I w we had a little bit of sun yesterday and I was really happy about it. I managed to sit outside for a little while. You cannot tell. I'm still as pale as pale as a ghost. I know people who are outside for like 10-15 minutes and they're like a little bit of color. You can't tell I was outside. But yeah, I was gonna be really really cool and film this around midnight. So you know 12 hours ago. Um no, no. It started to get windy, which is not a good situation to be filming outside. And it got heavily clouded and then it started to rain and I'm like this is just not supposed to be that way so I'm just gonna have to film this inside so anywho so my plans derailed my books still here so let's start with the Barnes and Noble I think there's another one yeah so I have two boxes from Barnes and Noble and five from Waterstones <sighs> all right packaging material I like these. Might be able to reuse that. Alright. First off, Neil Gaiman's Coraline. Um, it's been a long while since I read Coraline. I think, yeah, I read it. I read it in the early 2000s, just soon after it came out. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't fit the style of the other ones that I already have, but. It's gonna go with the other Neil Gaiman books and also because Coraline is it is a really cute story it's it's a creepy story but it's a really cute story also another classic because Coraline is a classic now in case you didn't know that I got Sun Tzu's The Art of War and that's a good oh that is even prettier than I thought it was it's gold Oh, that is so fitting. That is so fitting. I mean, it's a little stiff, but... Oh! Um, preferably, I would love to... It's a... Oh! It's, um... Yes, yeah, that kind of cover. But preferably, I would love to put this right next to Vuelukwaide. Uh, and... I was going to be such a cool Icelander and tell you the name off the top of my head, but of course the person with memory issues, yes, I'm one of those, um, you know what, I'm just going to have to be a little bit of an editor and put it on the screen, because I cannot remember the name of the... I can't, I can't, okay, you know what, I'm just going to go on with the books, because I cannot remember the name. But one thing that I did get also, because I've seen quite a few people talk about this throughout the years, and you know I cannot read every single book. That's just not just that's just impossible. Um, but a lot of people have been talking about the Grishaverse, about Le Le Bardugo. I got the Six of Crows duology. Um, so that's Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, and um, I am one of those people that I prefer. To collect a series before I start reading, um, and that's because when Harry Potter was coming out, we got about a book every year, which was really, really fast paced when you think about it. Extremely fast paced for an author to write in, and um, which is pretty much why I think a certain other author who wrote a very popular 
is writing a very popular book series that I haven't touched because it has themes and tropes that I, I'm just not interested in. I think that's the main reason why he's so slow with his writing is because he saw how Rowling basically burned out on the Harry Potter series. But honestly, myself as a reader, I got burned out because constantly waiting, not for me, and also seeing and reading and hearing the attitudes of other readers and fans of the series, I was just, it's not for me. So I got burned out. Um, so now I prefer to simply collect the entire series, preferably when it's out, otherwise, like I'm doing with um, two or three, just buying the books as they come out and then I'm going to read them. That's, that's just how it needs to be. <laughs> so I definitely prefer like trilogies, series and duologies from there out. I know it's not popular opinion, but it's mine, so here's your little Barnes and Noble. And um, I know what's the, I do remember this one because I've kind of been waiting for it. Um, but the thing is, I'm not sure I was going to look um, because I saw someone on YouTube, definitely on YouTube, talking about this book. And um, I think I did, otherwise it was simply Barnes & Noble's own page. And I'm like, if that is what it is, and it gives me a sense of a... Um, I'm not scan fraud, but like the feeling of someone getting what is theirs. And just the enjoyment of seeing them suffer for it. Um, I'm not sure if I can... I'm going to hold up the cover though. The author is Duncan Ralston, author of Womb. And the title is this. And essentially, uh, it's about an island called Little Pearl. Where, where this um, billionaire holds legendary parties for a lot of high class rich people um but you know given the title of the book i think i think it's gonna be a little bit of a payback because um <clears throat> there's a creature on the island and it feeds on you know blood and the creature has children and um uh, so it's going to be a monster story and hopefully there will be a lot of people who get what they deserve. I'm really hoping for that. Otherwise that book will be on the burning pile. And I've been waiting for this book since last year, Emma Rosenblum's Bad Summer People, um, because I've been waiting for it to be out in paperback. I believe this one was... Um, very popular last year. I really need to catch up on the popular summer reading books because I have I have others that I need to really want to be getting to. So what this one is about uh, Sun Scandal Secrets. It was never supposed to end in murder. So basically I think it's like yeah, rich people on an island and then bodies begin to pile up and they are like well, who among us is a killer? <laughs> so that's two books about islands, rich people and dead bodies piling up. And here's another book that I've been waiting for. It's Travers, Travis Elboros, Atlas of Forgotten Places, Journeys, Journeys to Abandoned and Desert Destinations Around the Globe. I am collecting these books. Like if you're interested in maps and just the globe in, in general, and all the abandoned places all around the globe. These books. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy reading them. Now, as usual, most of these books that I'm buying, they are from the discount and paperbacks because I like paperbacks and I like a discount. I like a saving. But this one is... Well, I couldn't wait for this one. This is Catherine Max. Every time I go on vacation, someone dies. It's about an author. Ooh, 10 days, 8 suspects, 6 cities, 5 authors, 3 bodies, 1 trip to die for. 
Yes. And the other one is Marlon James's Moon Witch by the King in paper book format. I do already have it in a hardback and I was like, I originally thought that, that would be fine, that it wouldn't bother me. Turns out it bothers me <laughs> to have a hardback and a paperback. And I'm like, hmm, well, because I am not going to be collecting this trilogy in both formats and So I got the paperback. And yes, so that's another trilogy that I am saving up for when it's finished. I am going to be buying every single, you know, well, the third, um, third part in paperback because... Because yes, I do understand that it's not very practical. I understand that there's uh, quite a few people who prefer to read as they go and find out if they like the premise, the story, the plot, the characters, the writing voice before they pay for the entire thing but my thing is that i really hate to wait if i start reading a really good series or trilogy and i have to wait for the next one i'm not doing that anymore and also if i end up not liking it and therefore donating it or even selling it i would prefer to be able to do so with the entire thing so that if someone else is interested in reading the thing they will be able to have the entire thing to read even though I hope it I don't like it someone else might and they will have the entire thing to enjoy so that is my reason and because I'm still I'm so optimistic I really really want to like thrillers that will happen one of these days so I got Steve Kavanaugh's um, Kill For Me Kill For You I am I think it was Kayla from Books and Lala, and I'm pretty sure someone else was also talking about this. I need to, I need to just keep a copy, like I need to write down every single time I see some YouTuber or someone else talk about a book that I'm interested in. I need to keep a file on that so I can be like this person recommended. So basically, it's about two women who meet by chance, who 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 conspire to one of them killing the guy who destroyed her family, and the other one destroying the other guy. Who just, destroyed the first one's family. That's like, if you kill for me, I kill for you. I mean, there have been people talking about this book, so I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. Uh, Francis Brody, Six Motives for Murder. I literally just saw this on Waterstones. And I'm like, I mean, although there's first book here, Murder from inside? A murder inside. So it's Yorkshire, 1969. So it's a female prison that's like catering to a wedding. Well, this is wedding of the year. And then one of the inmates discovers the father of the bride stabbed to death behind the Mercury. And then they have to figure out who did it because obviously the inmates are under suspicions. But that does be that they, it was one of the inmates because was a perfect opportunity to commit a murder, but when you have a selection of suspects to take the fall for you. Ew! Emma Flint's Other Women. Star commentary, twisty and wonderful suspense. What? London, 1923. Mm -mm. Ooh! So, a single woman in London after 37 year old typist, single after a great war, uh, meets a man who turns out to be married, and then the other woman is found murdered, and the husband slash boyfriend. The, the adulterer is framed for the murder, or in the frame for the murder. It looks like the wife will do anything to protect her family. So that's, so that's something. Also I really like the design, like, you see the, the feminine faces and then the shadow of man's face. Sometimes covers are just the single reason to buy a book. And then here's a non-fiction by David Mitchell. Unruly, a history of England's kings and queens. Because Lord knows they made a lot of interesting history in England. Lord knows. And some of the kings and queens have been just out there. Um, mind you, Nordic history is interesting enough on its own. But I'm buying British books, so... Oh yeah, this one I'm like... Hmm? It's Casey Davis. How to keep house while drowning. A gentle approach to cleaning and organizing. Um, another non-fiction, and it's aimed towards neurodivergent people. 
or struggling with mental or physical health. Most of us will, will at some point in our life struggle like that. You know, getting some help is really, really useful. Lord knows. <laughs> Onto the last box. Almost sad. Like, I like opening these up. Mainly because this has been working every single time. I have not broken it. A single one. This entire video. Love it! Oh! This is because of um, Gavin Reese it all. It's Anne Finds Madame Doubtfire. Because he was talking about this book earlier this year and I'm like, I remember that movie. I remember that. And then he said, oh yeah, there's a book. And I'm like, there was a book? Of course there was a book. There's an entire thing about the author in the back. Oh yeah, so I absolutely love the movie with Robin Williams. He's fantastic. Um, looking back at it as an adult, it is really, really creepy thinking about it because um, your ex-husband goes into your service disguised as a woman so that he can be around his children and basically around you as well. He's dis he disguises himself as the nanny. That is creepy. As a children's book, it's interesting for an adult. That's um, that's a thriller. Honestly, one of these days, someone is going to be writing an adult thriller version of the nanny. Oh, you know, Madame Doubtfire. That's creepy. Now, who can I blame this on? It's Tess Gunty's The Rabbit Huts. Well, first off, it was on sale, discounted, um, I believe. Um, I cannot remember why. Because basically it sounds really depressing in a way. It's kind of... Mm. Basically it's um, contemporary America. It's, it's about development. It's about cities that are like... America cities that are dying. And uh, people who would really rather just prefer to live there and not have their entire lives be turned upside down by developers. So it's like... One of the chapters called Chemical Hazard. Threat to us all. Ooh, okay. Okay, so quoting... I have no idea why I bought this book. Um, C.A. Lynch, The Traitors. Someone is an imposter. All of them are traitors. Who will survive the night? Six people. Uh, 24 hours in a crumpling manor house. The chance to win a portion of one million dollars. The cats... Beechwood Castle was the site of one of the most horrific murders in modern history. The smell of blood, decay and death still hangs heavy in the air. Maybe because of the description, that's why I bought it. And because a lot of people have been talking about this book, it's Alice Slater's Death of a Bookseller. Which is about booksellers. One who is... Abs I think both of them are really in into um, true crime. One of them, at least, is very heavily into true crime, is literally obsessed with it. Another has lived her own tragedy concerning, the, I think, the murder of her mother and the relationships that develops between the two. And would you kill for a good story? I mean, the title is Death of a Bookseller, so someone probably... Someone is probably going to die. Probably. Maybe? Titles I've liked before. Oh, I've got tall, Paul Tremblay's The Paul Bears Club. I think I'm picking this up because of both Gavin Reese It All and Kayla from Books and Lala. I kind of feel like someone else read it. Can't remember. I remember those two because I really watched them maybe a little bit too much. So basically, it's this guy, Art Barbara, writing his memoir or his memories, you know, from uh, 1988. And his memory of this girl called Mercy, their friendship. And the thing is, um, Art is writing the story, but Mercy is reading it. And so there's like little excerpts, little like things to the side that Mercy is like commenting on. They had this Paul Bears Club that is basically volunteering to show up as mourners for people who didn't really have any mourners. As Anson. No one else to bury them. Yeah. I heard something about like adjacent to vampires, but not really, but not, but not, but not. Hmm? And the last one is Curtis Sitton 
Curtis Sittenfeld's romantic comedy. Is this? I kind of feel like this um, is going to be turned into a movie or something. So the main character is Sally Mitz. She's a su successful scriptwriter for a legendary late night TV comedy show. Not doing well in love, not doing well in romance. But then she may meet this pop idol with a reputation for dating models. Romantic comedy ensues. I mean, is this... So this is the only romance I think that I picked up. Um, most of it has been like thriller, horror, some non-fiction, classic, fancy, murder. <laughs> so yeah, these are the books that I picked up this time. Now, am I going to go out on a limb and like make a promise that I'm not going to buy more books? I cannot make that promise because... What if I go maybe one of these days or wander into a bookstore and I find a book that's interesting? Like, where am I going to do then? I'm going to buy the book. So yeah, these are all the books that I got this time around. I can't wait to start reading again. Like, I don't even think I can stand up to see. Can I? Can I? Can I? Am I stubborn? <laughs> like that. Also, they're really, really pretty. Thank you very much for watching, and I will hopefully see you again in some other video of mine. And particularly the ones when I really start reading these books and tell you all about how I, how, 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 how it goes. <laughs> so, then, take care. Bless, bless. Whee! And I didn't drop them.